Hey there, I'm Preston Spratt for Spratronics Learning Lab, and today we're taking our first look at the Brick Q Motion Essential Kit. Now, this is our first time working with this kit, and so what we'll be doing today is probably unboxing it and just taking a quick look at how, what parts come with this and how to use this kit for the very first time. Let's check this out. And we're opening this up for the very first time. Never used this kit before. Looks pretty cool. Looks like we've got some excellent resources on here. And so we're gonna go to legoeducation.com slash start. But I notice on the back side of this sheet, we have our explanation of where all our parts are going to go. And these sheets are excellent. They let us know exactly which pieces are gonna go into which bin. And we will start by putting our stickers on and putting all of our pieces in the correct bins. An organized kit makes for much faster lessons where we can find the pieces that we expect to have. Now, my understanding with this kit is it does not require an internet connection. And so we've got a book labeled B and we also have a book labeled A. So I'm guessing this is where all of our directions are going to be for the things that we're building. And so this is our very first look into this kit. And so what we will do first is we're going to unbox and organize this kit. So we've got these two trays, and this is very similar to our Spike robotics lessons. And so inside we have our set of stickers. So we're gonna go ahead and put stickers one through four onto these trays. And I see that my longest one is tray one, and that's where my blue Legos are going to go. And I do pick this up to help me attach them. Next up we have red going in the bottom left corner for me. And that one is going to be a smaller square. And when I unbox this kit, I lay everything out so that my picture looks just like my bin in front of me. Where I see that red and green are small squares and yellow and blue are going to be the bigger squares. One quite straight. Looks good, and our final sticker for this tray is going to be our yellow. Now the way LEGO boxes these up and ships your kit, these bags are all color coded already. So all it's gonna be is opening them up and pouring them out. I'm gonna go ahead and put my second tray together now. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to set these trays off to the side we're gonna take everything out of our kit, and then over time, we are going to put everything back into the box so that it's totally organized and ready to go for our very first lesson. All right, we'll go a little out of order. I did my big rectangular trays first, which look like my black and gray, as well as my brown and white or tan. We'll see what that actually looks like. And then we have our miscellaneous items where I see our minifigures will go, our brick separator, looks like our baskets will go in there. And then we also have our purple and another blue color going on this other small square. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna set these, set my sheet out in front of me so I can see where everything goes. I'm gonna set my trays over here. And the fun thing about the trays is they will fit right inside the lid so that nothing goes away. And we're going to just unbox this as we go. And then once we unbox it, we'll put our Lego pieces in the correct trays. I can even scoot these over so you can see as we do that. So let's say tray number eight. That's gonna go into this corner with the white and brownish looking pieces. And I like to keep a clean work area, so as I pour these out, I'm going to be throwing my trash away. All right, 
right next, I see piece number six, which is blue and purple. This looks like a lot of our gear pieces. So it's gonna go into our very next tray. All right, I see our blue kit. This is bag number one. We have a whole square just for blue pieces. Quite a few blue pieces and they all fit in there just fine. Let's see, bag number five, black and gray. This is, these are our gears and looks like movement pieces. So I see wheels, I see pins. And so that is our black and gray tray. And a couple pieces fell out into the other one, that's okay. We also have this small bag right here. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And those pieces can pour out right into our black and gray section. And those gray Lego Technic pins, I'm pretty sure are loose, which makes things roll. So here's number seven. This is gonna go into our mini fig bin, as well as our brick separator bin. And it's the one that has the hockey stick, the brick separator, the mini figures, and the dog. This dog is one of my favorite ones. This is our Lego Spike dog. That did not focus on it. This one is in all our Spike robotics kits as well. All right, so bag seven is done. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the small bag that has some hair in it. Looks like a little bunny rabbit. Great, we're making fantastic progress on this. Bag number two. This is all red, so I know you can figure out which tray this goes into. Got a small bag that we will open up, and those red pieces go right into the red tray. Our red tray doesn't seem anywhere near big enough to hold these red pieces, so we'll just move a few things around. And then we'll pour out a few more into there. Looks like we have two more trays left, but more bags than that. We have bag number four. This one is going to go into our yellow set. Turn that a little bit. Open up bag four. Right into the yellow bin. Again, another full bin. There are pieces overflowing out of it. We have some very small yellow pieces. I'm going to leave those in the bag for the time being. And green seems to be the one that I'm missing right now. And green looks like it's bag number three. I took bag number three out right at the very beginning. Here's bag three into our green section. And so our trays are full, but there are still pieces in the bottom of this kit. So even though we've unboxed everything, we still have a lot of things left over. So. We've got this bag that has some big plates. It looks like some wheels. This other bag that has even bigger plates and some more wheels. And then one more bag that has beams on it. And then finally, we have these extra pieces. These extra pieces, I'm going to leave in the box. And we have these with our Spike Essential Kit. And that Spike Essential Kit, we've been able to go two years using the robotics kits every day without getting into our extra pieces. I recommend just leaving these in the bottom of your box. Or if you want to always make sure you have the right parts and maybe somebody's keeping track of this, if you're a teacher, if you're a teacher, I definitely recommend locking this up in just a different area and you can replace the parts as needed. But if this is your own personal kit for home, you can just leave it in the bottom of your box. I recommend finding the pieces before you dive into that replacement box. And if you have to get into the replacement box, we would rather you have all the pieces. There's also a small piece of paper at the bottom. This is just some explanation of the packaging that can go into the trash as well. Now, we did not put all of our Lego stickers on. We have this big sticker right here that shows the pieces that are gonna go into the bottom of our kit. So we will take this off. And it's just a nice reminder to us that these pieces go into the bottom of our kit. And we will put this sticker inside right down here. So you can see where I've placed that. And that just lets us know which pieces will always go down into this box. 
These bags do need to be cut. You could probably tear them, but they're not the same material as all the little Lego bags. So I can just pour those out. See, I've got some string right here. I'll keep that in the kit. One more bag of large pieces. And those can go in the kit as well. And then finally, our last bag. These are the plates, the frames, a couple of large gears. I can only imagine the tearing of the bags is loud in the audio. So we have unboxed our kit. We've put our stickers on the correct trays, and now we're ready to put our trays back into our box. So I'm gonna hold this up one more time. Now that we have unboxed everything, I like to put everything back so it matches my Lego piece guide. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I see that my blue is gonna go in the top left corner, just like this. And then my next set, I see that my minifigures piece will go in that top right corner. Move some pieces so that everything's in there correctly. And we have now unboxed our Brick Q Movement Essential Kit. We've labeled all of our trays. We've sorted all of our trays and it appears that we have all the pieces that we are expecting to have. So I can go ahead and put this top on right here, and this is gonna keep everything together while I clean up my workspace before diving into our very first build that we're going to do together. You have one sticker left, number 10, and this sticker allows you to label the outside of your box. If you're using this kit in a classroom, it's always a good idea to label the box and so you can assign groups to it. If you're using this at home, you really don't have to label this box unless you want to, but I'll be putting the sticker on mine so that I know that this is our Brick Q Movement Essential Box. I'm Preston Spratt. We have unboxed our Brick Q Movement Essential Kit. We're ready to store it now or dive into our first build. Today we're doing our very first lesson with the Brick Q Essential. To do our lesson today, we're gonna to be learning all about training dogs. We're going to be exploring push and pull forces and how that could go into training some dogs. We're gonna be using our kit to build a dog obstacle course, and then we're gonna tell a story about how we could use that obstacle course to train our pup. You may notice behind me, I've got a dog rolling around on the couch way back there. A push and a pull. Those are two forces that use energy. Think about what a push is. Push something away from you. You could push a ball. You could push a friend. You could push a stroller. A push is when you use energy to move something away from you. That other force that we talked about, a pull. You might pull a wagon behind you. I can grab this box and pull it towards me. What are some other things that you could pull? Maybe you pull up onto the monkey bars. A pull is just using energy to bring something closer to you. Let's take a look at a video all about training dogs. Wow, those are some fast-paced dogs. I've got a couple questions for you based on what you just saw. What were some of the obstacles that you noticed in that video? An obstacle is just a challenge that might be given to a dog. Think about what you saw in the video and tell me in the comments or tell somebody else that you're with, what were three of the obstacles that you noticed in that video we just watched? Today, we're going to be building three of our own obstacles using our kit. I'm gonna flash a couple ideas up on the screen for you, or you could just look at page one of your book.
these three obstacles that you're going to build, they should be something for a dog to go over or under or through or around. Use your creativity, explore what's inside this kit and create three obstacles for a dog to be trained with. Get going to it and then we'll take a look at what some of the ideas were that we came up with. My creation is a fetch machine. And the way this works, I put an arrow on it to even show you how this works. But you push the spring back and then you let it go and it's gonna launch this ball for our dog to chase. Pull it back, let it go, and it shoots out. I know that dogs love to play fetch, especially this dog right back here, Paisley. She absolutely loves to run after a pink frisbee. So I was inspired to build the fetch machine as my build. Again, I pull it back, I let it go, and it launches the ball forward. It's a pretty cool build. I'm pretty happy with it. Uses a spring to create that force to launch the ball. And then my dogs can run and chase after the ball to play fetch. Let's take a look at some of the other inventions that you could have created. And I'd love to have you tell somebody what did you make with your kit and how does it show a push or a pull or how could it be used to train a dog? I'm using page one of my instruction book to give me inspiration for an obstacle that I could build for one of my pups. Now, I love to play fetch with a dog, so I'm gonna build a fetch machine. I'm gonna need a couple of long beams in order to hold everything together, and then I'm gonna need some flat pieces to build everything on. So I'll take these two blue pieces, and I'll put my long green beams on top of them. And this will hold everything together. I like to build on a flat surface to hold everything together. Next, I'm going to need to make a ledge, something to hold the top and secure it, but also for me to build my spring mechanism on top of. Next, we wanna get rid of all the friction down here on the bottom. So I'm gonna use these smooth purple pieces in order to allow this to slide nice and easily. Next, I need something that's going to push the ball. So I'm gonna use this piece and now it slides nice and easily because of those purple pieces. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this white piece and place it in the middle and another white piece place it on the back of this and then I'm going to take my spring piece and my spring piece I'm going to put the gray side on the back and the part that moves on the beam and so now I can pinch this and it's going to push itself back out. Now I like to include directions to show how things work so I'll put a little arrow right there that shows you pull this back. Now, if I just launch the ball, it's gonna go way off my table and I might not find this Lego piece. So I've attached a string to my ball. I'll attach the string here on the edge. And now I can test this out. I'll pull it back, I'll let it go, and I see it launches. <laughs> 